Diana. Yeah, love. I can't sleep. The bad dreams won't go away. Want me to tell you a story? Yes, please. Is it a fairy tale? You have to find out. A not so long time ago, in a land not so far away, a young man and a young woman thought were about to change. A sudden announcement stating that they were already engaged to those strangers in order to strengthen their family's alliance struck the daylight out of them. They took refuge in a regal pond to clear their minds, but they decided to play a trick that made these two unlikely souls to meet, and this is where everything began. What on earth are you thinking when you decide to marry me off to a girl? That I haven't even laid eyes on. I'm not ready to sell yet. Oh dear lord. Family's nuts. Are you okay, miss? Let me go. Why so rude, baby dog? I'm just trying to help you. As you can see, I'm not that keen of strangers, and I definitely don't need your help. Huh. Thank you very much. Now I command you to let me go. Correction on the stranger. A stranger who's trying to save you from falling head first into the water. And I accept your thank you, by the way. But who am I to deny this lovely lady her wish? Mr. Captain, you cocky idiot. Now let me go before I go ninja on you. Huh. As you wish, my lady. Hey, I was trying to help you. It's none of your business. Step aside. Look what you're starting to do. You're looking for a small thing back there. That's a lot of insults you got there. Hey, where are you going? Hope. Oh. Are you going to tell me your name? Never in a million years. William saw the necklace Eleanor left behind at the bottom of the pool. Eleanor showed up at the doorstep, looking like a drenched puppy, and her mom almost had a heart attack upon seeing her daughter in a mess. William went home looking all smug and smiling to himself. His dad wondered what made his son seem so happy and pleased of himself. He must have done something naughty. That boy. So the two of them waited for their fiancés, trying their best to hide the nerves behind nonchalant and bored expressions. As soon as Eleanor heard the front gate open, her palms became sweaty and her heart raced. Darling, listen up. I have a surprise for you. You're going to meet your fiancé today. Isn't that exciting? Darling, listen up. I have a surprise for you. You're going to meet your fiancé today. Isn't that exciting? No! No! Not at all! Come here, love. Let me do your hair. Mom? Who's my fiancé? The son of a business partner. A boy. Wow, gee mom, this is really descriptive. Well, hello there, Captain Joe. Seriously, mom, why'd you do this? Well, both of our families decided to marry you. Off to seal the relationship with our family. I hear he's a fine young man. Isn't that great? I'm gonna have good looking grandchildren. Mom, stop it. I expect you to be on your best behavior during the duration of this day. Understand? Yes, Mom. So, Dad, what's the entire rocket all about? Well, this is for the benefit of our business and engagement of our family with our family. And oh, for your well being also. You never take anything seriously, so your mom and I decided to engage the two of you. <laughs> really? So, is this the best solution you can come up with? Will, I know this is hard for you, but we really want to see you settling down for good. So please, just do it for the both of us. Bye. I'll do it. So the two of them waited for their fiancés, trying their best to hide the nerves behind nonchalant and bored expressions. As soon as Eleanor heard the front gate open, her palms became sweaty and her heart raced. Sorry, got late. I got some important business to do. So... 
I'll be dead by now. What are you thinking about? 101 creative ways to kill me. Well, inside that pretty little head of yours is a mind of a criminal. Well, that's a surprise. You're going to get it. Everyone, I would like you to all meet my lovely daughter. Anymore. Oh, what a dashing young lady. It is very nice to meet you, dear. Oh, and this is my son, William. It is nice to meet you, Eleanor. It's nice to meet you, too. Oh, aren't you too adorable? I believe that the divine man served. Dig in, kids. Two families ate peacefully other than the kicking war happening between William and Eleanor under the table, but heavy footsteps disturbed the comfortable silence blanketing upon the group. Upon hearing the familiar thought of boots, Eleanor jumped up and ran directly to the source, her best friend that she missed so much. You're here! I thought you were in India doing some medical expedition. I missed you, love. How's life been? But the way you're hugging me right now, that's me a real miss. I have no idea. <coughs> oh, didn't see you there, mate. I don't mean to be rude, but who might you be? Actually, I'm Eleanor's fiancé. I'm Harold, her best friend. Nice to meet you. Let's continue our meal, shall we? Don't mind him. Finish my screen. Harold joined the family dinner and sat next to Eleanor. The two were immediately caught up in their conversation, yeah. obviously catching up on each other that they didn't see William glaring daggers at them. He did everything just to get Eleanor's attention again, but she only stuck her tongue out at him and carried on with her conversation with Harold. His brother Nicholas saw all his attempts and shook his head. He still preferred his ex-girlfriend Catherine over Eleanor. So William, how's Catherine? Nicholas, we are not talking about this in front of your brother's fiancé's parents. I was just asking him an honest question. We are not talking about her. End of discussion. Please excuse me. Sorry about that. It is just alright. Who on earth is Catherine? William's family decided to organize a picnic the next day to make up for both of their son's behavior last night. Everything was going well except for William still glaring at Harold. But what they don't know is they're going to face yet another surprise. Thank you. 
I have a surprise coming for you, my dear brother. What are you talking about? Yes. Definitely, but she recovered quickly. Yeah. Catherine decided to join the picnic and put it shamelessly with William. Now it was Eleanor's turn to throw daggers at them. Maybe she's jealous. Maybe, maybe not. You have to find out. I clearly don't like her. It's none of your business. I'm already engaged. You're not married yet, so I can just change your mind. What are you doing? You have to break them up. I'm trying my best, Kay. It's hard to resist this really man in there. He loves her, Nicholas. Can you see that? I don't care. Her family was one of those who did not even spare a single glance to the victims of the Black Plague. It killed millions of people, including my real parents. But it was her sister, for goodness sake. Your parents didn't even mind at all. They've changed, and they're all Christians now. You have to break them up, end of discussion. Nicholas had a grudge to Eleanor and her family. His real family died during the Black Plague, and Eleanor's family, one of the richest families, didn't even bother to offer a helping hand to the dying people in the Menorah. Catherine still loves William. But she can hey, see that William doesn't okay? feel the same way for her. Okay? She was hurt, yet she made this William feel this way for her, by cheating on him. Now, she finally Sorry, thought... Sorry, it's just, just a lot in my mind. Like, that's all. Can I do something to make you feel better? Can you give me a hug? Eleanor's son! I bet her heart shuddered upon seeing the two of them hugging like that. She ran away crying. Am I right? You're a clever girl, aren't you? <clears throat> so this is what heartbreak feels like. Only that you fell for nothing. Mila, why are you crying? So much, you know. Falling in love. With the person who's in love with someone else. I fell for him. He just didn't catch me. I, I don't blame him. He doesn't even know I'm madly in love with him. For him, I was just a girl. His parents wanted him to marry. Seal of our family's partnership. It's the uh, it's like everything's going to be alright, baby. Trust me, you can make it true. 
and nor ignored William after that incident. William began to wonder why she was avoiding him. He tried to remember anything he did that might have hurt her, but she couldn't come up with any. It was seriously bothering him. So he decided hey, to ask Harold if he knew anything. How are you doing here? Um, I just came to ask you if you know the reason why Eleanor is ignoring me for the past few weeks. She's not married anymore. Why don't you ask yourself or Catherine for that matter? What are you talking about? She saw you and that girl being all intimate on each other. It was only a hug. I was just comforting her. Besides, I don't feel anything to fight for Tell her that I write it down in your diary. I love Eleanor too. She was my childhood sweetheart. But clearly, she really felt hard for you. No. She loves you, not me. Besides, your parents arranged the two of you to get married. I just hope you won't break her heart into pieces or I personally smash your face. I promise. I won't hurt her on purpose. What are you standing here for? Go get her, lover boy. Oh my god. Excuse me. Have you seen Eleanor? I think she's in the garden. If it's not there, try looking at the patio. Thanks. Tell me you feel Baby dog, what you see is not what it looks like. I was just offering her comfort. I've had enough of your lights, William. Baby dog, please, just give me another chance. Enough! Don't call me baby doll again. For goodness sake, I love you, okay? I love you, ever since I laid eyes on you. I was ecstatic. The moment I knew you were the girl my parents arranged for me to marry. I love you. I love you, okay? Stop! What the two of you are doing? Why do you hate me so much? I didn't do anything to you. You did nothing, but your family did something. They could have saved my family from dying in the Black Plague, but they did nothing. They couldn't give them even a piece of bread. You are all selfish! But mom and dad adopted you. And your life became better. But nothing compares to having a real family around you. We could be a real family if you just let us do. Nicholas, please. Just give us a chance. You are the only ones you have now. And we truly love you. You do? Yes! yes. A minute? Yes. yes! Well, I'm sorry for being a bitch, but I was just fueled by my anger. And I forgot the family who accepted me and will always love for me. Nicholas admitted that he dragged Catherine into this mess. William, Eleanor, and both of their families forgave them for the little scheme. William decided to propose to Eleanor for real. Catherine became a tad jealous and decided to sabotage the proposal, but Harold managed to stop her from doing any serious damage. Yes. 
Seriously, you may start the fire with all this candles. Can you please stop worrying and let me go all romantic, even just for a minute? I don't know how to say this, but here it goes. Eleanor Pierce, I love you ever since I saw you on the pool. I love you, even though you're sarcastic, annoying, sadistic sometimes. I love you, not just because you're beautiful, but also you're kind, smart, who basically have all the qualities and that I'm looking for. Daughter of parents intervention, I'm still I would still have done anything just to have you. You are the one for me. And we have all this arranged marriage stuff. I would like to ask you from the bottom of my heart to spend time with me forever and become Mrs. William Lockwood. In short, will you marry me? I will. I love you too, William. Even though you're arrogant and cocky sometimes. Not to mention you love teasing me. I still love you nonetheless. I spend every minute of my time loving you. You'll always be my baby doll. I've got something for you. I love you to the moon. Job in the pool and William returned to her on the day you proposed? Yes, the very one. We are Eleanor and William's great grandchildren. This is us. Sleep tight, lazy. Whenever you can sleep, just remember the greatest love story ever told. The story where our family came from and the love is found for. We made two unlikely souls across each other's family. Thank <laughs> you. 